The front rings here are quite gummy, they're very dirty looking. Um, this piece, the brass piece, has uh, a lot of marks on it. I don't know whether that's verdigris or dried out grease, but all of that really needs to come off. These components need to be able to move smoothly and freely. Otherwise, uh, it's a trial when you go to adjust the aperture and shutter speed on the camera. Those dials should move fairly, fairly, fairly freely. So I'm going to clean these bits up with some naphtha and cotton buds. Well, I'm pretty much ready to put these front rings together. So I'm just going to rub a little bit of molybdenum paste on this brass component inside and out. Just so that everything runs smoothly. That looks fine. So the front ring here, the first thing that goes on is the aperture ring. I've got to hook that spring up to its tab. Of course it doesn't want to stay hooked up. Stretch it out slightly. Get the little tab here through the slot. There it is, that's done. If that was rough, if that felt rough, I'd lubricate it with a bit of graphite powder and then blow the powder out completely. The brass ring. There's a little notch, a little cutout in here which has to go over this pinion, otherwise you'll never get it on. This often doesn't want to go on easily. It's in place now. And it has to line up so that this notch here, this end of this crescent lines up with the far side, the left end, this side of this notch here, just like that. And where is the other ring? We're missing something here. Here, yeah, this. This ring here opens the aperture up to full aperture for viewing when you cock the shutter. And at the moment it's covered in grease and dirt and I'll need to get all that off. If this is greasy, uh, its broad surfaces tend to stick rather than moving quickly and you'll find that it loads up the shutter mechanism. I'm just going to wipe the inside surface of that with some molybdenum paste and the outside surface as well. Just, but that's all. And that sits in here like that. And I think the third tooth should point to the pinion gear at this point. This tab should be just down about two millimeters from the top. That looks right. Put that to one side. Bring in the speed control ring. Now there's a wide, a long notch here and a deeper notch here. Lubricate that with a bit of molybdenum paste. That's all that's required. That's very important because it has to couple to the speed tab on the shutter. So I'll fit that in place, making sure that speed tab drops into that slot. That's correct. That the speed dial shows B. Taking our front rings positioned correctly fit them into position and if you're very very lucky everything couples up straight away with no fights I've just wriggled that a bit that looks promising and there are three screws that hold this together short screw at the top position short screw at the bottom position 
to my right. And long screw in the bottom position here to my left. I'm doing those screws up lightly, I haven't not doing them up tight. Just driving them home. Now I want to test the shutter speed dial and see if it rotates. It does, and the dials counter rotate smoothly. That's good. So I can do up those three screws. And I'm going to take my camera top, put it on the camera body, because this little shortened one I've got here only does half the job for me. I'll put the camera top back in place. And run this thing through its paces, make sure that everything works. Don't bother putting the leatherettes back on the camera until you've got everything else done and you're certain that everything works correctly because it's very frustrating if you remove the if you put the leatherettes back and then decide well actually you need to get back into the shutter because perhaps the flash contact is not working correctly or something of that nature. Or indeed that the flash shutter stops working altogether because some spring has got too tired and decided to flag it away. Well that's immediately my film advanced lever locks out at the full position position I've got a pretty good idea what's doing that. Let's get this top off. That is almost certainly the adjustment screw on the top of the release lever shaft and almost certainly it needs to be screwed down another couple of turns. So I've got to reach into that, it's hard to get to because it's down underneath the lip of that meter. So I've got to hold my meter carefully to make sure it doesn't get disturbed. Run my screwdriver down obliquely. Let's give that a couple of turns. We've got to get that adjustment right anyway, but at the moment it's obviously so far out that nothing will go. So this time I'm just going to hold the top on. That's fine. Shutter works. I can hear the film release lever releasing before the shutter fires. There. So I still need to make quite a bit of change to the adjustment there. Probably about half a turn I would think, possibly more. Let me do that now. And I'm holding this meter firmly in place with my thumb while I do this. I don't want that meter coming adrift. If the meter comes adrift at this stage, we've got to have the front back off the camera because the cord would almost certainly come loose from the pulleys. Now I'm listening to hear that click. That's the click. So it's releasing the film advance just before the point where the shutter fires. That's the click, then the shutter fires as I keep pressing it down. So I need to adjust that down a little bit tighter than that, but not much. Certainly not half a turn. Ideally the shutter should release and the film Advance should be released at the same point in the stroke of the shutter release button. Try again. It's 
Well, that certainly seems to be bang on the money at that point. That's good. I'll fit that top plate for the moment. I've got a couple of things to review. One is to make sure that my lens mount to film plane distance is correct. Um, and that can be measured. That can be measured with a dial gauge from those spots there against a known standard. There's an alternative to doing it that way, and the alternative is that you have a lens a known good lens and basically you put the known good lens on there set the infinity focus use an infinity target with a ground glass or better still a split image screen and check that the focus is correct at that point and then you can make adjustments to the position of the front here as necessary But this is looking very hopeful so far. I'll be back when I've got that sorted out. Time to put the base plate back on this camera, I think. At the moment I've just got the very short base plate on here that I put on when I'm servicing one of these cameras. And it's cropped short so that I can get the front panel in without having to fight with it. Otherwise it would be trapped under the edge of the base plate. And it's handy to have a base plate on the camera while you're working on it because it stops the spring here for the capping plate and the spring here for the um, advance lever from getting away and causing you grief. If that spring in particular, if you press the release lever and that spring comes up over the top, inevitably it gets caught on something and um, you're having to take everything apart again to remove it and try and straighten out the damaged spring. So now we've done with this, so I can put the full base plate back on the camera. I'm not putting the leatherette back on it immediately. I need to wait till I'm fitting the prism because I will be wanting to adjust the position of the reflex mirror so that the image at the film plane and the image on the screen are focused at the same point. I already know I've got the camera body correctly adjusted. That works well. I was able to check that on my measuring gear and I was also able to check a selection of lenses I know that I have here that I know are good are set correctly to confirm that the image focuses correctly at the film plane and interestingly I was able to put the Voigtlander lens on the camera and check that that focused correctly too which of course it did. So I'm quite happy that I have that part of the job all complete. I'll put the third screw in the film advance lever here. It's typically not necessary to have the whole three in place, two in place is more than adequate for most purposes while you're working on the camera. Of course they will need to be there when you close the camera up, finally. Oops, something's sticking. What's gone on? I suspect that something has uncoupled. what I think that the film advance 
at the top of the camera I think that the cocking rack has shifted back and is no longer engaged correctly with the top of the film advance shaft. The film advance shaft must have backed up slightly when I removed that base plate. Let me see if we can check. It's one of those tasks you only need three pairs of hands for. It felt like that should work. And that film advance definitely does not want to move. I'm going to open up the bottom of the camera and see if I can figure out what has gone wrong. If I needed to move anything at the top of the camera there, of course, the film advance shaft is happily hidden underneath the meter. And if I'm going to disturb the meter, then I'm going to have to have the front off the camera again. So something here, I need to investigate as much as I can from the base of the camera. And I'm not sure what has gone wrong. Thinking of possibilities. So that's That's the rest position. That's cocked. Now my lock lever is fouling. Now that top cover is not held, holding down the lock lever far enough. Let me just get that sorted out. The rest position of the lock lever was catching. So, why won't that roll backwards? Oh dear, something has gone wrong. No, it's not the lock lever holding things back. I think my cocking rack has come disconnected from the top of the film advance. Well, I'll be able to get that back. Possibly. Let's put my short top on here to stop that meter from falling off. that lever on there where what position am I in
Oh dear. Disaster, disaster, disaster. I'm going to have to take the front off. I'm straight back in, back in 10 minutes. Well, I said the cocking rack had disengaged from the film advance most likely, and that's certainly what's happened. You'll see that the film advance was able to back up slightly, and it disengaged from the film advance at this point. So I'll remove that cocking rack. and get everything positioned correctly again. And that's a result of me removing the film advance lever from the bottom of the camera and allowing the film advance shaft to rotate backwards under its the action of its return spring to the point where the rack had moved so far back that it was no longer engaged. So that was my error. And let's see if we can get this film advance correctly positioned. Now I would say there would be the start position. Now I need to put my base plate, my shortened base plate back on here. And first of all I need my little spring for the capping plate. That was here a second ago, so it can't have gone far, it's probably stuck to the meter is it? No. I'll find that and carry on from there. That spring was there all along, it hadn't even fallen on the floor. Put that down into position. Not sure that went on straight, let me check. No it did not. That's better. It's my lever in position and my short cover. Just put two screws in the base of that to hold it in place. Fit my film advance lever two screws will suffice why is that not falling into place that's better and check that the film advance moves smoothly. It does. Plenty of tension there, that's all good. Put the cocking rack back in position. Now I had that correctly positioned. There. If I advance that one notch and see if that actually will work. No, that hits the uh, bodywork there, hits that chrome drum. That won't work, so I'll put it back where I had it. It was the correct position. When the rewind was able to unwind slightly, it just pushed that rack back and then of course this was sitting somewhere here 
not coupled. This gear's got an odd number of teeth. If I reposition it, I can have that slightly forward of that position, I think. I might do that. It's sitting in the right position, but really it should be slightly forward of there in an ideal world. Let me do that. Well, about 45 minutes has passed, and we're back where we left off. Camera all ready to go. Just checking that the film advance is nicely locked there. It is. Now this time I made no changes really to the position of the uh, cocking rack. I had had it in the correct position to start off with. The, there is some variance in the position of the gear on the top of the film advance shaft simply because it has an odd number of teeth but the difference in terms of positioning is very slight and certainly didn't account for any of the problems so this time this time i set the frame counter to number one which brought the lock lever down into position which will prevent the film advance shaft from rotating backwards and disengaging with the cocking rack at the top of the camera. And of course once the film advance lever is back on here it can't do anything unfortunate again. Does it work? It does. Okay, so now I can continue putting the screws in on the base plate or the base plate trim. And that was just three quarters of an hour I didn't really need to lose. If I'd been a little bit more cautious, it wouldn't have been a problem. Now I have to say that was a very unusual problem. It doesn't normally happen that the film advance can back up far enough for the cocking rack to actually disengage. There we go. That part we're all happy and done. My next task with this camera is not the leatherettes. My next task here is to clean and then fit the prism.